England has stood on Scotland for far too long. Plundering and killing everyone. When will we be free from this tyranny? The dress act they did say we're taking your tartan away. The act of the union has been such a blow. Three hundred years under Westminster fold. Scottish resistance, I will always be. Scottish resistance, it's my destiny. Family clan, I will wear my tartan. Our heritage runs through our veins. We'll pass it on to our bands.、Mm -hmm. We are in pain and are suffering. This global pandemic is killing me and my family. The corporate giant is giving me minimum wage. My dignity's gone, and I'm sitting here lost again. We are told what to do and where to go. To see by our own society, Scottish resistance. I will always be Scottish resistance. It's my destiny. The family clan. I will wear my tartan. Our heritage runs through our veins, and we'll pass it on to our bands.、Mm -hmm. Rob the poor, feed the rich. Well, isn't life such a bitch? How can we live this way? The Tories are here to stay. My Scottish pride, I need to decide my ancestors' pain. For my gain, I should hang my head in shame. We are to blame. To let Westminster rule our brain. Scottish resistance, I will always be. Scottish resistance, it's my destiny. The family clan, I will wear my tartan. Our heritage runs through our veins. We'll pass it on to our bands.、Mm -hmm.
Good evening, everyone. This is the Scottish Resistance Chat Show live from the Scottish Resistance Community page on the 7th of November 2022. Uh, first of all, I want to say we don't have everything shared onto uh, Facebook yet on all the groups, uh, just on the community page and some other community pages. Um, but for some strange reason, my Facebook app on my phone doesn't show groups at this point so as soon as we can get it shared we will share the show around and please if you can help us out to share the show around please do um let me get the chat up where's the chat uh, that's not it that's not it again that's probably it there we go. I I have found the group, so I might be able to share it as soon as I um, introduce everybody. But I've got, yeah, I've got it. And now we go to the chat. Sorry about this, guys, but here we go. All right. I want to, first of all, welcome everybody to the show. Uh, uh, Lillian Evans, Billy Holland, Nancy MacGyver. Um, Alice, Alison Cooper. Um, what else do we have? Owen Hay and <laughs> Lindsay McGinnis, and those are the people that I can see now. Uh, Siobhan Blachek, that she's just uh, popped in as well. Uh, all right, uh, let me introduce the panel to you. Uh, first of all, um, well, I think somebody that at this point needs no introduction anymore. Uh, she has been on the show before. Uh, we just see it on a lot of our, our posts uh, of the Scottish Resistance. Freedom Tracy, how are you doing, Trace? Hi, good, thank you. Hi, great, everyone. Great having you on. And someone that is also one of our regulars uh, at this point, Sean Clerk, and how are you doing, mate? Hi, Raymond. I'm fine. Good to have you on. And our founder, Mr. James Scott. How are you doing, mm -hmm. uh, James? I'm fine, Raymond. How's yourself? Doing good, doing good. Um, good. Yeah, great to, to, to be doing the show again. So, uh, again, people, I will share um, it on uh, share the show around on on, uh, on on the various groups. But you have to give me a minute. All right, let's start with the first topic, and that's uh, the recent protest and other <clears throat> events that uh, the Scottish Resistance have put out. Um, James. Can you tell us about the uh, previous uh, one of which was a um, uh, the Halloween event, uh, but other all, all, yeah. other uh, protests that we that, that Scottish citizens have done? Well, well recent, the most recent event we did was uh, the event on Halloween evening, and it was it was very very good. Uh, although uh, the weather forecast said it was going to be bad, it, but it wasn't too bad. It was it was mild. I, I, if you watched the, the video of it, I'm going to about just put a shirt on. It was just quite mild and it was quite a good event we went to the Scotia Bar uh, which is the oldest bar in Glasgow mm -hmm. and it's got a reputation of having four ghosts and uh, it was we had said to the staff that we were doing this ghost hunt uh, and they said yeah that's fine but they then ended up getting all these singers in and my god you couldn't hear yourself talk <laughs> so the ghost hunt within the, the bar was more or less abandoned. Now, we were in a wee area where it's got a plaque up to where this ghost known as the Grey Lady is uh, frequently seen. Uh, and nothing was nothing happened until we got up to leave to go outside, to have a wee talk outside the bar. And just as we got up, the EMF meter I absolutely went crazy. All the lights on it were all flashing and all the rest of it. Uh, and these things are particularly effective, this EMF meter is particularly effective together uh, with a camera. If you had a camera, if we had a camera at the time when this was happening, we might have caught some orbs, you know, the white spirit orbs. But it definitely went crazy when we were just about to leave in the area where we usually see this uh, grey lady that has been reported. The staff that we spoke to in there, every single one of them, Every one of them report strange things happening to them, uh, seeing ghosts uh, and things happening. Like if they're the first person in the morning 
and they're walking around getting the police ready to open up. They're hearing their name being called. Mm. Quite a lot of them experience this. So it is a very, very haunted place. Going way back to the 1700s, it's a very, very old bar. And it sits next to the building that used to be the Scotia Theatre. So a lot of these old theatre hall performers would have been going into that bar. And one of them would have been uh, Stan Laurel, uh, who yeah. started his career at the Scotia Theatre that sits right ne- that used to sit right next to the Scotia Bar. We did a wee talk outside at the plaque that we managed to get up to Stan Laurel. And when, the funny thing is, when we started talking about Stan Laurel and we talked about Jimmy Logan, a, a well-known Scottish comedian of years gone by, who bought the, that theatre, when we started talking about this, the meter started to come off again, started happening again, all the lights were shining. So we did get some activity on the night. The main activity was when we went up to the Trongate area, where we talked about the the witches that were that were burned. Some of them it was reputed that they were burned alive. When we went up to that area, we started talking about this: how these p- poor people were burned alive. What happened was the meter had its highest reading, and it went up to the fifth mm-hmm. light, and all the lights were all flashing. So we did experience things on the night. It was it was, it was an amazing night out. It was absolutely brilliant. Some of the pictures Dave took as well, they, and the other bar was yeah. a, bit, a bit weird yeah. as well. Like, yeah, uh, we went yeah. up to the old burnt barns, that's where we've got uh, a plaque up to the folk singer, Matt McGinn, and we were in the old burnt barn, so we had a great, great night, and we're going to do something like that again. Mm-hmm. Now, the funny thing is, I couldn't get a medium for that night because it was Halloween. But see, it after <laughs> Halloween was over, everybody was looking at the footage of all of these mediums, and I was saying, are we going to go on your next event? and be your medium. So I've got a whole list of them now to, to pick from. So there you go. Yeah. So that was our most recent event. I'll, I'll maybe update you on uh, upcoming events later on. But yeah. we can move on to the next uh, subject just now. Uh, well, uh, Tracy, you were there as well. Um, uh, yeah. What was your take on oh, that? No, it, on was the good, it, was, it was a good night and I had to be meet our thing and the ghost hunting meter and no it was going off like mad like eh? it was especially outside when we were at the the wee plaque for standing eh? Laurel Day it was a lot, yeah. a lot of that was going off like eh? but uh, no it was it was a good night like eh? and it was a mild night and uh, it was just good just having a wee walk about and then going up to the bars and that the yeah. burnt barn was brilliant as well they had it all prepared for us they had sandwiches everything laid out for us pumpkin oh, soup cool. and that and it, that's that was cool. good that was good. Yeah. And your and your uh, how did you experience it, Sean? I wasn't there. You weren't there? I thought you were there nope. as well. I thought, thought nope. I saw you. All right. Well, it, you cannot be everywhere, right, uh, right Sean? That's true. That's true. true. I, was there, I was there in spirit only. Ah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you always are, mate. You always are. <laughs> <laughs> and um, James, what, what, what were the last protests? Did we already talk about the last protest? Or the last protest I think we did was uh, against energy companies. What That's I think right. that was, yeah, I think we already. And we did. We, we 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 got inside SSE and uh, in Glasgow uh, to protest against the fact that the two-year uh, energy price guarantee is only going to last for six months. And then in reality, the energy prices in Scotland have gone up by in Scotland have gone up by over a hundred percent plus in the last year, and people now uh, are suffering the results of it and the cost of living crisis, uh, and and will will continue to do so throughout this winter. Yeah. Uh, we, we, didn't, we shouldn't stop. We should keep on going there and going to different mm. energy companies and making sure that. Okay, that there's, we're noticed basically that people are no happy with the situation, but we do need more people out there. Yeah. And well, that, 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 I would I would concur with what Tracy says. I mean, the last time uh, we were there at SAC, we had about eight or nine people, but the fact of the matter is, it's no good people just moaning and groaning online and being keyboard warriors. They've actually got to turn out to these protests and actually take part. Uh, you know, yeah. otherwise things won't change. The only th- time things will change is when people get off their backsides and actually go out on the streets. Amen, amen. 
and they definitely need more people. Can when you put up posts and people are saying, "What's the point?" and then that you only had this many people where you will come out with us. That's because they never turned up. And yeah. No matter if you dislike anybody or even if you didn't like the resistance, uh -huh. you're going out for the people. And That's right. I'm, to be honest, I was one of them. They come through my door, changed my meter when I was in the end. And it's no nice. And it's like people do need to get up and start fighting these people and making sure that we're noticed and we're heard. And that we're not yeah. happy that, with the situation. And and Tracy, Tracy, isn't it? It's true that they forced entry to your house against your will when they had already mm -hmm. said they would not do so. Yeah, I thought I'd sorted it all out with them and they went in the next again day. No any email, no, no letter, just a card sitting at the meter that they had changed mm -hmm. and that was it. Uh, but after they had already said they had sorted it out ways, again, that I was going to pay the bill up in uh, payments. Uh, but no, they just went through the door and they, apo they, they, they never apologised, but I got compensation for it, for, for them going through the door. But that's not the point. A lot of folk, again, the same things happen to you and they're just allowing it to happen. So it's like that's people right. have got to get up and get out there. And can help you know, these people can uh, they seem to be able to manage to cope themselves doing these kind of things and can they yeah. do they need people's support. Um I, I'm just amazed that people don't see that if you don't stand against these things that nothing will ever change. That's mm -hmm. that's nothing. Exa that's exactly right, Raymond, because the bo the bottom line the bottom line is Tracy did stand up. Exactly. She she mm -hmm. went I she asked me well I told her about the, there was a journalist interested in doing her story and we got the story into the Sunday Mail, not once but twice and the company offered more compensation each time so mm -hmm. the bottom line was she fought back and she won mm -hmm. and the point being is that if you're going to sit in your arse and do nothing, you'll get nowhere uh, they'll just walk all over you you've got to stand up and be counted and I say to all the viewers tonight it's no good just uh, saying, oh, there's nothing that can be done. Well, nothing will be done if you don't lose that negative attitude. You've yeah. got to have that positive attitude to get out there and do something about it. If we're going to get social justice, Scottish independence and equality and rid of inequality, it's only by fighting back that we're going to do mm -hmm. that. Exactly. And and just remember, guys, if, if, you, if you remember back a couple of years ago when, when that started, the TV license. People started to say no and see what you know what happened there. There's still people still paying it, and there's still people that let them in into the house, but they weren't uh, you know you weren't obliged to let them into your house to check the TV uh, hookup. People said no, you're not getting into my house, and they couldn't. This These people is no aren't even different. allowed to look this is your no different. And to see if you've got a TV, it's actually against the law for them to look through your window and actually mm -hmm. and see. If you've exactly. got a TV and stuff exactly. like that, it's just learning to stand up for them. And there's a lot of things on YouTube that you can learn. Mm. Free, but if they do come to your door, how to, how to manage these people and stuff yep, like that. Exactly. And, um, all the information's out there. You just need to have a wee look and yep. have a see what there is there and what other folk are doing to keep them away from the door and not be their TV well, license. The, the, a lot, a lot of Scottish, uh, a lot of Scottish yesers. Uh, you know, basically have protested against the BBC, including ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the fact is that I wrote a letter into the National, which was published today, which was to show how uh, the BBC is full of Tory bias. And Martin Croxell, who is a BBC presenter, was suspended for, for 12 days recently because she laughed about uh, Boris Johnson not being allowed to stand for the leadership, you know, when he withdrew from, he came back, flew back from America and he stood he stood again for the leadership of the, the Tory party and then he withdrew. She burst out laughing and she made a joke about it on, on the uh, what the papers say, you know, on the BBC 24-hour yeah. channel. And she was actually suspended from the BBC for 12 days for that. And what is clear is that the reason she was suspended is there's a guy called Sir Robbie Gipp who is on the BBC Board of uh, Governors and he uh, has a very great influence. He is the former Director of Communications for uh, for uh, the former Prime Minister. Uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, what was one? the name? No, the, the female Prime Minister. Yeah, there have been a couple the last right, the couple of years. One, the first, not, not the last one, the first one. Um, Theresa May, you mean? 
Theresa May. So Sir Robbie Gibb was uh, was was as director of communications at Ten Downing Street, and he got a job back straight back onto the BBC. And he ed and he's been accused by Emily Maitlis, who's left the BBC. Uh, Emily Maitlis used to do Newsnight, and she that was hard. That was you know did the Prince Andrew interview. It was hard. It did. Uh, you know, she got banned off Newsnight for a night because she criticised Boris, uh, Boris Johnson and Partygate. And uh, she, in the James McTaggart lecture in Edinburgh back in August, said that this Sarobia Gip was determining editorial policy and news and current affairs at the BBC and was doing it in favour of the Scottish... Mm. Uh, and was, do, was a conser- an agent for the Conservative Party. And nine out of the 12 board members of the BBC on the board were appointed by Boris Johnson. So the, the idea that the BBC are impartial and neutral and all the rest of it has absolutely gone out the window years ago. And I don't blame people for not paying their BBC licence because it is a biased channel. And they actually put British values into their, into their constitution and, and into their policies now. Where they, where, where they didn't used to do, that they're, they're more biased in favour of the British state than they've ever been. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, let's um, move on. Um, the second topic that we want to talk about is our week in history. And James, you got a good topic lined up. Yeah, well, this week in history, because we're coming up to Remembrance uh, Day, I'm going to talk about something that's very important. The all over the world to hide this from people. Yeah, if you found it, you'd wonder why they're hiding it from people. And it's the Kellogg Brian Pact. Now, let me just explain. The First World War had 37 million casualties. It was a horrible war. 37 million. Just think about that for a sec. 37 million casualties. So after the war was over, all the countries of the world, all the major countries anyway, uh, USA, UK, Germany, France, they all sat around the table and they says, we can't go on like this, we can't have another war like that, we can't. 37 million casualties is too much. So they, they created international mm-hmm. war law. This is, this is the truth. There's no getting away from this. People laugh about this when you try to explain it to them because... They don't believe it, but it's true. All the countries of the world, all the major mm-hmm. countries of the world, signed a document called the Kellogg Briand Pact, and it is the general treaty for the mm-hmm. renunciation of war. That's right. Because what they said was that this was going to be the war to end all wars. Now, think about that. They even said that. This is the war to end all wars. This first mm-hmm. world war, war to end all wars. We'll, we'll sign the document, and all the countries of the world... All the major countries of the world signed it in 1928. The following year, in 1929, just about every other country in the world signed it. So basically, nearly every country in the world signed this. They signed it. Renunciation of war. They would not go to war again. What happened? We got more and more wars. And even one of the countries that signed it, Germany started the Second World War. Now, 37 million casualties in the First World War was bad enough, but there were 65 million casualties. 65 million casualties in the Second World War. And that shouldn't have happened. It should not have happened because it made an international war law. Now, when we try to use this law for being the police stations and say certain people that uh, started wars like Tony Blair and Gordon Brown and that, uh, these people should be prosecuted as war criminals because they, what their actions led to the, the killing of millions of people in Iraq. They should have been prosecuted. But folks say, oh, but that's an ineffective law. I say, but wait a minute. If you look at the law, Germany that broke that law, that's the law that they were prosecuted under, folks. In the Second World War, they were prosecuted using this law, the Kellogg Briand Pact, international war law, the renunciation of war. So 
this shows you the power of the media. The media make people that think people that are in the resistance, for example, that go out and find things out that most people should know. This is important law, and they keep it hidden. They make a joke about it. It's no bloody joke. All the countries of the world signed it. The United States put their bloody stamp on it, official stamp, that this was a renunciation of war, international war law, and they, yet they went ahead and had another war and had 65 million casualties. I don't guarantee you that all these people who go to these remembrance services, none of them have a bloody clue about this law. It's hidden That's from fair. them. Uh -huh. yeah. This is what we've always been saying about the media. One of the Rockefellers, Rockefeller's mm -hmm. one of the richest families in the world, one of the Rockefellers said this, let us control the media and we will control the minds of the masses. We will make them believe what we want them to believe. And that goes for lots of different subjects, folks. There's lots of one-sided subjects. Mm -hmm. You know them yourself if, if you think about them. I'm not going to go through them. There are lots of one-sided subjects where you only got one view of that mm -hmm. subject. You don't get told the other side. They control the media. They control the minds of the masses. 65 million people died unnecessarily in the Second World War. And millions and millions of more people have died in subsequent wars after that. And this war law sits there. It's never been renounced. It's always lay there. Yeah. It was used against Germany in the Second World War. And yet here we are. We're still at war. There's a war going on just now, as we know. Russia, who also signed it, by the way. Russia also signed this. Uh, Kellogg Brian Pact, a renunciation of war. And yet they are involved in a war just now. And he I mentioned. Know, oh, sorry, go ahead. I don't know what we can do until we get control of the media and get the truth out to people. Exactly. We must exactly. know the truth. And, and another thing, you, may, you mentioned the United States. Ever since yeah. every, um, I think every president since Kennedy yeah. has started. A war or invaded a country. You're absolutely right there, well, except, well, well, except one. Except one. Yeah. And that's the one, the one that no, nobody likes, according to the media, and that's the, Donald Trump. The one that nobody likes never started any wars. Yeah. Uh, so, well, actually, Raymond, you're absolutely, absolutely spot on. Yeah. The Kellogg, the Kellogg Briand Pact uh, was used at the 1928 general renunciation of war law was used at the Nuremberg trials against the Germans, against the Nazis, uh, for starting the Second World War. Yeah. But it's never been used, it's never been used at any other trial on, on war law uh, ever since, because the Americans have started so many wars, the Brits have been involved in wars like Iraq and Libya and, and Syria and all, all these different places. Uh, Vietnam, the Americans I'm talking about, and the, the fact is, uh, it's not convenient for the kellogg Brian Pact to be used uh, against uh, these other countries. It was only convenient because Germany was defeated at the end of the Second World War. But the bottom line is, it brings us on to the fact that this, it's, we're coming up to Remembrance Day this, uh, this Sunday in, in the UK. And, you know, the, the, the red poppy, I call it red poppy fascism whereby people wear the poppy and, you know, basically uh, we're supposed to glorify, we're supposed to glorify the dead of, of various wars. The fact of the matter is there are no glorious dead. There's only young men and women that have died in wars before their time. They never had the families. They never, had, they never knew to be fathers or mothers or uncles or aunts. And they, they, they actually perished before their time. And that's why on Sunday, at 11.15 in George Square, at, the, at Freedom Square, at the Burn Statue, we'll be there at 11.15 to put down white poppies to basically champion peace in the world and to say that no more people should die in wars. And that includes the war in Ukraine. Because there has to be an end to this war in Ukraine. The Russians and Ukrainians and the, and the Americans are in there fighting by proxy in Ukraine. And the fact of the matter is, 
this war has got to come to an end through international negotiation and there has to be a negotiated peace. It will be an ugly peace, but an ugly peace is better than an ugly war. And everybody, everybody is suffering because of this war. The cost of living crisis is worse. People are, people are dying in Ukraine. People are dying in Russia. And uh, people are suffering all over the world from starvation and from uh, the cost of living crisis, including in Britain, Scotland and throughout Europe. We are suffering as well. And it's because of that war. Wars only destroy. They never solve anything. And that's why we need uh, an international peace. The Chinese are right. The Chinese said very recently to uh, the German chancellor uh, when he visited China, uh, German chancellor visited uh, Beijing last week, the Chinese said there has to be an internationally negotiated peace as soon as possible because this is bad for the world and that is the case and bringing up the Kellogg Grand Pact is no bad thing given the fact that it was the renunciation of war war doesn't solve anything, it only destroys mm. everything Exactly, yeah. could not agree more um, James anything in more yeah, you have. I'll, just, I'll just say a wee bit more and then Tracy can speak on this. Mm -hmm. uh, we think as people that believed in peace, I think about the folk that believed in peace like John Lennon. Imagine all the people with that, that famous song. Uh, and you've got people like Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King. Every one of these people that believed in world peace and then to imperialism, every one of these folk were assassinated. And that's no accident. People that want to make this world a better place are targets. Of people that glorify war, and it's horrible. We, I've met people who were soldiers. Some of them come back traumatised, even from recent wars they get involved in, like with the Falklands. Yeah, and even and even so, worse, and even worse, yeah. when they get back home, they're demonized by their own country for being yeah. in the war that they were sent into. Yeah, absolutely. And we uh, recently were, out, were, were recently were out feeding the homeless, and there was a man there. It was an ex-soldier, and, and he lifted up his trouser leg, and his leg was all black and blue. Was ready mm -hmm. to go gangrene, and he's told he was he was going to hospital a week later to get. He's like amputated. This guy's like, this guy's in the streets in 2022. This is not a bloody dark ages, it's 2022. Yeah. And he makes it a scary by... place. Then do you think that we have people, walk, it makes it a scary place for people walking about like that? And yeah. again, the guy's what, he's getting his legs amputated in a week's time, but yet he's walking the streets. It's he was, you know, he, was lying, he was lying there and he was telling us that he didn't have any feeling in his leg. His leg had rotted. Yeah. I think if he was moving about, he'd be hobbling about one foot. He was, he was just lying with his leg uh, out of the way. And he says he had no feeling in his leg whatsoever. But why are these people in the bloody streets? I mean, we recently did a, a joined a, a protest up at the um, in George Square at the uh, council building there, uh, we joined uh, the Homeless Project Scotland, trying to get a building to house these people. These people shouldn't be on the bloody street. Uh, it's just awful. It's just awful. I've, I've said, I've said on, on, on numerous times on, on the show, um, I mean, there are so many empty office buildings. <laughs> With um, uh, which the uh, the companies that, that that own them basically have to pay people to watch the uh, watch the uh, the buildings. Now, if you house the homeless, they would be able to do so for you, and it will actually save them the company's money. But they still don't do it. Yeah, yeah. What about all the places where that they were giving everybody all these injections and that everywhere? Where are all these places now? Can all these makeshift places where they were oh. all made up and can all these warehouses, all these other places that were made up for everybody to go and get their injections and stuff like that? Where are they places for even the homeless to go in? Can no, all make something that, like that for the people to go in? No, the reason for that, Tracy, they can make all these bloody makeshift places because they're making bloody billions out of mm -hmm. this stuff that pumped into folks' arms. I don't want mm -hmm. to get too into that because it's a subject that pisses me off. 
Because uh-huh. uh, there's horrible evidence regarding that stuff, so I don't want to go into it here. But uh, as you say, these makeshift buildings are just thing we not. How the hell can you not even get one building for the homeless? Not even one. Well, I was, I was going to uh, come on to that. The, if you remember the protest we were at uh, a week last th- Thursday uh, on the Homeless Project Scotland, the biggest grassroots uh, homeless charity on the ground in Scotland, who do the soup kitchens each night for seven nights a week, yeah. uh, the Hillman's Umbrella in Glasgow. Uh, they had the big protest in George Square, if you remember, just over a week and a half ago, mm-hmm. where, where you were at Tracy, and so was yeah. uh, James Scott, and we were there, and uh, they were they are campaigning to get a building in the city centre to to you know to have the homeless there so they can go indoors, a warm area where they can get food and get advice and welfare rights and and health advice and for any of their addictions and stuff like that. And uh, that was the reason for the protests in George Square. The the, the fact of the matter is that, as I understand it, what Glasgow City Council ended up offering them after the protest was over and it was done and dusted in the media, and that was they were offered two hours at the St Francis Centre in the Gorbals, which is way out of the city centre, and two hours, two hours, and they were to bust them in and then bust them back to the city centre. I mean, that was absolutely awful to be offered only two hours. The St Francis Centre itself is actually quite a good building. It's actually quite modern, and it would have been a suitable place for giving them, say, for a you know a night, you know, each night this, you know, through the week, you know, each night. But they're only giving them two hours, uh, and that's only you know a couple of times a week, a few times a week. So the, the council have offered them next to nothing, and uh, so they're still without a property. They're still without a property. And what they were offered, and this is what went out in the media by the council prior to the protest, they made out that the homeless project Scotland were offered suitable properties, and they turned them down. What they were offered was rat-infested. Uh, places out in the middle of nowhere, uh, which you wouldn't put a dog in, never mind the homeless. And uh, it was absolutely scandalous. Now, today, the Glasgow City Council has has opened what they call warm places in, in local communities across the city, and that's a good thing. In a very bad situation, we shouldn't have warm places, but that's where we are, and they, they are for people that can't afford their cost of living bills. But there's nothing for the homeless, nothing for the homeless in Glasgow or anywhere else for that matter. Mm-hmm. That's I just Jim. felt when we were sorry when we were out there, Sean, and that woman at seventy odd year old, and if it hadn't mm-hmm. been for for the support that she had got through them, then she she probably would have been she wouldn't have been here. I don't think. That was and Mags. She, I think that was Mags, wasn't it? Uh, I know, and she, she she was crying her eyes out and stuff, and it just made you feel yeah. so hard looking that people are actually at 70-odd-year-old are walking the streets and are homeless and need all this kind of support, and that, that's just crazy. You see, well, what people are forgetting is that we have mm. ghettoised our homeless in Glasgow, for example. There are 6,305 people living in temporary accommodation. They are being billed from, from, from 200 to 500 pounds a week for this accommodation. They're being chased after by uh, local authorities using debt collect, using sorry debt agencies to chase after them. And the fact of the matter is that I've got a petition before the Scottish mm-hmm. Parliament which was fully endorsed by the Citizens Participation and Public Petitions Committee two weeks ago, fully endorsed uh, uh, about the Scottish Government should be writing off the debt uh, yeah. for, for these homeless people and they should be paying the charges for the homeless people who are in this temporary accommodation all across Scotland. So all party support from that committee to change the law in Scotland. The petition was fully endorsed and there's a housing bill coming up in the Scottish Parliament by the Scottish Government very soon and the politicians of all the political parties endorsed that petition. SNP, Labour and even the Tory member endorsed the petition saying that that the Scottish Government should pick up the the tab for the homeless and they so they should. 
Yeah. And the fact is, no homeless person should be paying for their temporary accommodation when they've got absolutely nothing to give anyway in terms of money. Yeah. James? Right. We seem to have moved on to the next subject. We'll talk about the homeless for you well. We'll actually now write into the subject without an introduction to it. We can just continue with that subject. But well, actually, what, what, actually, what, what, what's the final topic? Was because we did have, yeah, but one we'll have now. to do the reverse way around now because we're yeah, well into the yeah, I agree, I agree, I agree. I agree. We'll reverse the topics round. One of the things that we were talking about earlier was that the soldier, that was the ex-soldier who had uh, his his leg had all gone black and. Blue, no feeling in it. He was talking about he was going to get it amputated the next week. People with that on the streets. And then there was the the old lady of 72 that Tracy was talking about. I remember seeing this lady. It's very, very thin and frail. And another thing that we saw the last time we were out feeding the homeless was a, a young teenage girl uh, crying her eyes out. <coughs> crying. Uh, and other people we saw we gave them food and, and they ate it as though they hadn't had anything to eat for days, just stuffing it down. It's quite it's quite heartbreaking, actually. <coughs> people, like us, people are just left in the streets. This shouldn't have been happening in 2022. It's, it's disgraceful. It really is. Uh, uh, We're going to have to go out and do another uh, Feed the Homeless yeah. thing. I'm thinking about maybe Friday of this week or maybe... Sometime next week. Well, I'll, Absolutely. I'll, just, I'll Absolutely. speak to other members of the resistance after the show. Yeah, yeah. Sure yeah. They, we'll see if we can get something set up. But, I mean, but the, the thing is that what we're seeing now is we're in the middle of a cost of living crisis. It's no longer it's no longer just a cost of living crisis. It's an, ex, it's an actual existential, it's, it's an existence crisis. Basically, people will die this winter uh, because of the cold and lack of food. And that's the scandal that's going to come down to, to haunt us because we've got the situation where people are, are, are going to die this winter on our streets, homeless people, people not being able to heat their homes. Uh, they're forced against the warm places. They get a couple of hours heat and a cup of tea. Saw the elderly today at a warm place in Glasgow, all over 70. What a country to live in when that is happening. What we have is we're back in the dark ages. We don't need to go back to the 8th century. We're now in 2022 and we've returned to the dark ages. Yeah. And that's where we are, a massive inequality. Britain as a country today, the fifth richest country in the world has got such inequality in it that the rich are so rich. You know, over the pandemic crisis, they got £600 billion extra. And that was to the detriment of the other 99% of the population. The rich have got richer, become yeah. billionaires and multimillionaires, and the poor have got poorer. We live it in a massive society of inequality. That's why I support... Alex Neil, who is the former cabinet minister in the Scottish government, who on Sunday in the Sunday Herald called for the Scottish government not to become a post box for the Tory party and the Tory government to implement the £1.2 billion worth of cuts. And he turned around and he said that the Scottish government can introduce uh, a wealth tax, they can introduce a mansion tax, they can introduce a land value tax. They can introduce a tax for all those that earn over £150,000 a year. And that would raise billions to help the poor and the working class this winter. And he says it could be done fairly quickly if the political will was there. And now he's still a member of the SNP. He's still he's an ex-Cabinet Minister under Alex and under Sturgeon. And I would listen to what he says. He's a former economist. And what he says makes sense. The Scottish government must not become a post box for the Tory cuts from Westminster. And Swinney should not be implementing £1.2 billion worth of cuts. There should be direct confrontation with Westminster on these cuts. They should not be implementing them. That's the challenge. 
That's what we should be doing. And this is what I'm saying to people who support Scottish independence. There's no point in having independence if we don't have social justice and a more equal society. But that's something we have to fight for alongside independence. Definitely. And quite a, um, a couple of months ago, like about six to nine months ago, we already talked about this. We've Last year, we were already talking about people having to choose between heating or eating. And actually, I think it was you, Sean, that mentioned about, about about six months ago that people now are having to do both. It's both things. It's either having both or nothing at all. And if sure. you think the homeless situation is bad now, if we're going through the winters and people with, with all the energy energy uh, hikes, it's going to be so much worse. Mm-hmm. It's going to be so much worse. Well, it is because you've got the, situ- the crazy situation give you an example. The housing associations provide social housing in Scotland. In Glasgow, it's the John Wheatley Housing Group, formerly known as the Glasgow Housing Association. Now, they have over 93,000 homes in, throughout Scotland, but mainly the main locus is Glasgow. Now, their chief executive was has been given £418,000 in the last year £418,000 while the rent arrears the Glasgow Housing Association are chasing after from their tenants is over £25.5 million and the same housing association made a surplus of over £62 million in the last year and yet the poor bloody tenants are getting chased after and in Scotland as a whole there's record rent arrears of £169 million for social tenants and 126 million for private tenants in the private rented sector. So what we're seeing is a massive increase in these rent arrears and we're going to see a massive increase in homelessness this winter yeah. because of what these rent arrears that I've just told you about. And unless the Scottish government actually goes in there and does something about it, we're going to see a lot of people die on the streets this winter. We're going to see a lot of people die of cold and hunger this winter. That is what is going to happen. And it's a tragedy that's it's already unfolding before our eyes. And I, I warned about it months ago. I warned about it in, in various publications, various newspapers and in the media. And people just don't take cognizance. People have got to get off their backsides and start fighting back to stop this from happening. Definitely. And I also say that when we actually go out and feed the homeless, then we need people's support. We need people to come and join us, people to support, donate some money into the homeless. Because we go out more often if, if we could, but we've just not got the funding. Every single penny that we feed the homeless way actually comes out of our own pocket. And That's we, fair. we've not got any problems yet coming out of our own pocket. But to be honest, half of us haven't even got it, but we still try our best to put something in, in, into the pot, basically, to feed these people. And we need people to come out with us and to support it. And can, like I say, we'd love to go out more than once every now and again and that, but we just haven't got that funding, like what other other groups have got the funding and stuff mm-hmm. like that, to be able to do it every night. We'd like to do that a wee bit more. It'd be out there a wee bit more often. These people didn't get the kitchen until night time. We're going out in the morning. And we're getting, getting them a cup of tea, something warm to get up to in the morning, where we need more people can to help us out with that situation and can be out there with us and support us by trying to feed the homeless. That's right. Definitely. Absolutely spot on truth. <laughs> we do um, need more people. We need yeah. more people to come out and, 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 and feed the homeless. We need more people to dig into their pockets and yeah. help out. That's I've got what a, we need. I've got a because, good comment, because, guys. I've got a yeah, good absolutely. comment. Uh, oh, don't, don't say sorry. Um, Chris Wilson just said, give me details, guys. I'll come out to help uh, uh, help with the homeless uh, with you. Uh, count me in. So that's at least well, one. Well, that's one. That's good that we've got one mm-hmm. person that said that we'll do it. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that, Chris. Start again. So. Mm-hmm. Um, James, anything else you want to add? Or shall yeah, we move on? No, just... just uh... Uh, backing up what Tracy said, that uh, we would go out more often, but we are putting our own hands in our pockets. That's we, we, did, we did actually, uh, I won't mention the man's name, but a man from Yes Rutherford, 
did give a generous donation the other day there of £50. So we are going out shortly now. We're probably mm. going to go out by Friday of this week, either Friday or Monday, and we'll feed the homeless uh, using that donation from that man and the other donations that we've got lying. We've got, I think we've got about £80 lying just now. Well, that's enough. That, 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 that is a good start. But we, mm-hmm. we, we need more because if, if we can get more money, we can even get some clothes and things like that for, for homeless people with warm jackets or, 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 or a pullover yeah. or yeah. anything that will help them. You know, it's, uh, I mean, all we are doing is pl- plug in a finger in the dike and the dike is opening up. Hey, that's our thing. Coming through. That's our thing. You know, that, yeah, like you're still in the Netherlands. Thing. That's our thing. Finger in the dike. That's our thing. <laughs> <laughs> David Dykstra. <laughs> David Dykstra. That's right. That's right. But having said that, every wee bit helps. And if yeah. we can help the homeless once every two weeks, yeah. we, we average, we average, we go out about once every two weeks to help the homeless. We do the best we can. We dig into our own pockets and other people who are generous with their money, like that gentleman in uh, Rutherglen. And we spend it, we spend it on hot pies, coffee. We spend it on food. We get, we give them food, and and where we give them money, it's for it's for, it's, we we once gave money to the teenage girl, but that was for her to get into uh, to get into the hostel, Euro hostel, to get a night to get a night's sleep in, indoors, and that was a generous donation that came from James uh, for that, and you know we every penny goes towards the homeless and it goes towards helping. And uh, just a uh, good comment uh, also by uh, David Eakins. Gloves and scarves are always good uh, at this time of year. So it might, yes. be, it might be a good idea to look at stuff like that as well. Not just, of course, the feeding yeah, homeless is yeah, a good thing, yeah. but just, especially with the time of year, and that one might be a good thing as well. Um, totally. Yeah. Let's let's move on. Uh, probably get back to this topic because we cannot stop talking about this topic anyway. So um, we'll get back to this uh, uh, soon. Um, final topic. Uh, it, it does fall into this a bit, um, but uh, topic that you want to bring up, uh, James. Action speak louder than words. Yeah, action speaks louder than words. Absolutely. This has always been the case throughout history. Action speaks louder than words. Now, the Scottish Resistance of Scotland's top protest group. We've got about 10,000 members in the group, but we've probably got about a dozen activists, people who I would call activists, people who will go out in the streets, feed the homeless, take part in lots of protests. We've taken part in many protests against tunnels, when they made the they changed the <clears throat> Scottish products to become British products, the British tea cake. So we had the the tea cake party, just like the the, the Boston tea, tea cake party. We had the tea cake party was mm. smash some of the Brit tea cakes, um, and that was a uh, I believe a lot of Turk stuff lies in the shelves these days. Um, now when we did this protest. The first protest at Turnock's, we were shitting some novel. But as the years have passed, and Turnock's himself, Boyd Turnock, the, the owner of the company, was awarded an MBE or something like that, some bloody Brit award, uh, people are beginning to see that we were right to do what we did. Uh, they have become totally British and anti-Scottish, just like a lot of organisations within Scotland. We've done many protests at Turnock's. We've done lots of protests at Raytheon in Scotland where they make bombs that have been used in Yemen that have killed men, women and children. Dreadful that they're making bombs in Scotland that are used to kill people in other countries. We occupied the Spanish consulate because of the treatment of the Spanish police against people who had a referendum in Catalonia, a peaceful referendum. And these people were beaten up. Some of them had long prison sentences, up to 10 years in prison, just for having a referendum. Even people in in, um, in wheelchairs, elderly. It's, yeah, it's absolutely. just really ridiculous. We also were involved, uh, the, the Scottish Resistance were involved the day that Jim Murphy came to Glasgow in a staged operation where two buses 
came in to the city centre and let off students with English accents that brought from down south. And they were all paid to put on red Labour T-shirts and pretend that they were Labour supporters. Yeah. It's all staged. I remember that. <laughs> and just to try and uh, go us, they had a man wearing lipstick, a, a famous actor, Eddie Lizard. Uh, <laughs> there he was with a skirt and lipstick, trying to go us so that we could say something, and but we didn't fall for it. So because they couldn't get a story, the BBC decided to say that there was a riot in George Square caused by... St. Enoch Square, St. Enoch Square. That's right, St. Enoch Square. You're absolutely right. There was a riot in St. Enoch Square. It wasn't a riot. No. There was police there. Nobody was arrested. Nobody Nobody was arrested. No, and yet it was a riot and everybody watching the TV thinks it's a riot. Everybody watching the TV thinks that these people with the red T-shirts are all late, genuine Labour supporters. They couldn't get any supporters. They paid all these young people, students, to wear red T-shirts, and you actually paid them as they were getting off the bus. Well, in general, mate, in general, mate, you, any unionist uh, um, affiliate party members don't ever show up. Just look at all the marches. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. the, the unions that are there yeah. is just only like 10, 12, 15 people. And that's a real count, yeah. not one of the the counts of of that uh, Mackie Jacket uh, guy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this is the illusion. This is the illusion, guys. This is the illusion that we live under. Yeah. Watch the box news and what's called the news, and you say, "Oh, look at all these supporters that Jim Murphy's got. He didn't have any. <laughs> they were all students. <laughs> they were all paid. It wasn't a riot. Nobody was arrested." Yeah, for days and days the word went on. Even just now, you can look up what the you know, Square protest, and we are called disgusting and rioting thugs. Nobody was attacked. Nobody we're was also arrested. we're also called we're we're we're, all, we're always being called, uh, you know, uh, uh, that they were on benefits and that were that were that were scroungers and you know by unionists and at the time and since. Uh, most of the people that were there were work workers, you know, that were on our side work, and uh, some were on benefits, but a lot of them were work. I was working at the time. I took a day's holiday for that particular day, and James Cook, uh, the BBC reporter, who famously went, "Oh, there's a riot in St. Enoch Square," and this is the same James Cook at Perth that wandered into the crowd at Perth when we were there, James, if you remember recently. Yeah. Uh, for the Tory, for the Tory thing, the Tory hustings, and he he was, you know, he was walking deliberately up to to to, you know, he was being provocative of he was. to deliberately walk up, filming with his little iPhone to say to people, well, and you know, what do you think? And what do you, he was he was trying to goad so he could film it and say that he's been victimised he's he's an absolute he's an absolute yun that's what Cook and all of the ones at the BBC are, they're all yuns and uh, they they look their noses down at us and they are inverted snobs because look at the head of security at the BBC saying I hope you can spell you know that kind of I I gave my own telling off Sean don't worry I I gave my own telling off I said listen you I'm very smart. Don't you buddy start that fucking nonsense? Well, I can turn around. I can turn around and say, "Oh, Mister, uh, I've got a university. I've got a, I've got honours degrees and postgraduate diplomas from from three different universities." Yeah. And uh, the, the, bo- the bottom line is, I think I can spell. Well, if they, yeah. they tell you, if they tell you to, I, I hope you can spell. Try them to, uh, try, them to, uh, to try them to spell my name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't be able to. <laughs> the wouldn't is double Dutch. <laughs> there you double go. Dutch. There you go. <laughs> double Dutch. Right, just to get back on this, what yeah. we're saying is action speaks louder than words. I've just mentioned a few of the things that we have protested. We've protested a lot more, believe me. We are the top protest group in Scotland. Definitely. Action speaks louder than words. Please, please, if you're listening, Come out and join us. Join the resistance. It's good people in the Scottish resistance. 
And our motto is just like the Musketeers, all for one and one for all. We all support each other. And That's right. Yeah. Welcome to join us. We don't all have the same view on every subject under the sun. It would be a bloody crazy world if everybody thought the same. It wouldn't it be a exactly. bloody, bloody exactly. boring? Bloody boring. Yeah. <laughs> boring. But you can be a good person and you get different views from somebody else. That's Come along and join us. We need help. Join Definitely. the resistance. And even if you just want to join the resistance, come up with some ideas that you would like us to maybe get involved yeah, in go. stuff there like that. Yeah. And it's, and it's right. not That's just about point. who's Here's in the group now. It's if anybody wants to join it, then can come up with some ideas. And I like to fuck with the pair thing. Sean Ray's angry face that they weren't really happy that it's, it's a disgrace <laughs> against the Yes movement. I mean, I'm, I'm having an angry face and stuff. And what do you kind of expect people to have in this day and age when the way that we're being treated? Yeah, and it's I like know, it's a, it's a smile on our faces when we're getting treated like that. <laughs> yeah, well, for other folk to come up with ideas, can we're open to suggestions? Can if you're not happy with the things that we actually do, can if you could come up with some ideas, and right. can we work with you as well? Can it's, it's open to everybody? Definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, we've well, we still have three minutes to go to the hour. But if uh, if if that's what we wanted to say about this topic, it will be the end of the show. Um, so it might be good to go around the panel for final comments. Tracy, final comments for tonight. Please come out with us. Please join us and just be out there for the people. Support the people. And I was one of the people that got their house houses broken into it, and I didn't think that would ever happen to me, but at the same time it does, it could happen to any of us and it's, we need your support, we need people out in the street, we need people showing face and can, whether it's for the homeless, donating some money to the homeless or whatever, we just need more faces and more people out there to support us in all of this and it's no point in sitting there on Facebook all day at, which I do, um, I'm golly eh, but I still do go out as well That's and then yeah. uh, we just need more, more, more people out there helping us and can showing us that showing, showing them that we're not going to stand for this anymore. Exactly, Sean. Your final comments. Well, one thing is clear: the social unrest that I predicted four or five months ago is starting to happen. We've had trouble in Nidri in Edinburgh at the weekend with the fireworks, where the young people are that are alienated, unemployed, and poor have started. Uh, causing trouble on the streets and the same in Dundee in the Craigton area of Dundee uh, uh, a week ago youngsters again setting off fireworks and causing trouble and attacking police and attacking members of author the authorities not saying that that's right but it's inevitable given the cost of living crisis given the alienation young people are feeling and if we're not supporting our young people this is what's going to happen. Let's channel the alienation that young people are feeling into proper agitation and proper protest, non-violent protest. That's what we've got to channel this. We've got to channel it to non-violent ends, not attacking people, but actually going out and actually channeling it towards non-violent direct action. That's what we need to do. But the social unrest has started, folks. It's already happening. Don't deny it. Nedry and Craigton show that's the case. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right. Um, my final comment, some, something around the same line, guys. Um, it's very easy to sit behind a computer and, like we always say, be a keyboard warrior. Very easy to do. And a lot of people, and a lot of people do. And some people, of course, are not able to come out but you can help in different ways. Share the events, share uh, a piece of the protest, uh, articles of the protest that we do. Share them around, get people uh, uh, to know about these protests. But if you can make it, if you can get out, um, contact us, either James, me, or through uh, one of the pages, just contact us and we'll talk with you on what you can do. Uh, which events you can attend. Like in the, in the coming weeks, we will talk about new uh, other protests that the Scottish Resistance will be involved in. We will let you know. And if you want to help us out, 
please do. If you can help us out, please do. James, final comments. Right, final comments. Uh, if you can, folks, any folk out there that are listening, anybody that wants to come and help us feed the homeless, please get in touch with us. There's, we've got a Scottish Resistance group. We've got a Scottish Resistance page. We've got 150 other groups that are Scottish Resistance groups. So you should be able to find us. We have a Scottish Resistance website. There's many different ways that you can contact us. Contact us if you want to come out and help us feed the homeless. Uh, on Sunday, remember on Sunday, we have a white coffee event. This is uh, uh, to remember about how crazy war is when they actually had a renunciation of war after the First World War, the war to end all wars, and yet we've still got wars to this day. It's absolutely disgusting. So, James, what time is that on Sunday at the, the Bird Statue? 11.15. And appropriate, appropriately, it is at the Burn Statue. And Burns is famous for the words, as we know. Man's inhumanity to man makes countless thousands more. That's his anti-war protest. Um, as well as that, on Sunday, on the 19th of November, we have an event coming up in the Arlington Bar, the Stone of Destiny at the Arlington Bar. Now, recently, the famous uh, patriot Ian Hamilton died. He was the last of the four students who, in 1950, on Christmas Day, reclaimed the Stone of Destiny that was stolen from us back in 1296 by Edward I. These four young students, three men and a woman, went to London and brought back the Stone of Destiny to Glasgow. When they got back to Glasgow, the first place they went was the Arlington Bar that sits on Woodlands Road. They've even got a sign today in the Arlington Bar saying, Home of the Stone of Destiny. There's, there's, a, stone of, there's a stone of destiny in there. It's up to you to decide whether it's the real one or the fake. Some of the folk in the bar say it's a real stone of destiny. Others say it's a fake. But there is a stone there in the bar that you're able to view if you go into the Arlington Bar in Woodlands Road. And on the 19th of November, we're having an event to remember that. Uh, we're going to have singers there, uh, and uh, lots of people will be there. I know that a famous author is going there as well for this event. Uh, so 19th of November, the Arlington Bar, uh, is, and you can view what some people in the bar claim is the real stone of destiny. If it's not the real one, it's a bloody good fake. It really is quite a quite a good sight to see this. That you might be witnessing something that is history. So come along, 19th of November, the Stone of Destiny at the Arlington Bar. If you can make it, come along, please. Um End of the month, 30th of November, right on St Andrew's Day, we've got this Andrew's Day Hutanani, where we'll have lots of singers singing Scottish songs. Now, one thing about this event, I've been trying to promote this through lots of Scottish groups uh, all over Facebook, and lots and lots of them have been rejecting it. Just think about this for a second, folks. This is St Andrew's Day that we're talking about. I'm trying to promote St Andrew's Day event. And yet, half of these so-called Scottish sites are rejecting it. The one that I really had to laugh at was a site that calls itself Believe in Scotland. Do you believe that, folks? Believe in Scotland. Rejected. An event of its Andrew's Day. This is what we're up against, folks. Just, I love the Irish people because look how they celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. They all get together and celebrate St. Patrick's Day. It's celebrated all over the world. Here in Scotland, there's so many people within, within Scotland that try and do things against their own country. The self-loathing Scot, as I call them. The self-loathing Scot. That's how they've been so well-conditioned by the British establishment. But listen, folks, we'll never give up. Only one more thing left to say. This is the Scottish resistance. We will never give up the fight for freedom.
Good night, folks. Good night. Good night, folks.